Welcome to Pop Turnative, where we dive into topical discussions from the worlds of pop culture, social media, and sports. Here is your host, Peter Romoliotis, aka PD Beats. How's everyone doing? It's so good to see everyone. Peter, hey, what's up, man? How you doing? <laughs> um, I'm doing good. I'm doing good. Uh, the show is amazing. It's going to be dropped worldwide uh, May 25th on Netflix. Travis, I'm going to start with this. I mean, you're going to do a lot of interviews today. You might have this question asked a lot. I'm just going to kind of get it out of the way. What was it like working with Fortune Feimster? That's what's up. <laughs> nice setup for that one. one yeah, of, what was it like? Yeah, you know, she's a bit difficult and, and divish when she's on set. Yeah. But like when, when, when it gets... No, she's amazing. I think part of the reason I wanted to do the show was to work with her. Aww. And she delivered in every way possible. And it was such a, such a joy to be on set and to, you know, the scripted stuff was great, but also just to get the play. She's so fast. And Adam Ray, he's one of your friends, and when I told him that I was working with you, he goes, get ready, she's fast. I'm fast. Ooh, she'd be fast. Yeah. But my main thing was I would always ask the producer afterwards, I was like, was I, was I as funny as, as Fortune? That was my main concern, I think, through the whole season. <laughs> That's a great tag team of Ruin Alden. I'm just saying. It's a good, it's, I don't think you can name, like, name a better duo. I'm just saying. I don't That's know. right. Yeah, we had a good time. Very I love it. Thank you. <laughs> Very into <laughs> <laughs> Milan, I'm going to ask you because I love. There's two things I really love about Barry, and I'm just curious if there's one that you like the most about her. They were both equal for you. I love his quick one-liners. I think some of my favorite kind of laughs were some of his one-liners and reactions and everything. But I really love his passion and knowledge for pop culture and geek culture. So I'm wondering if there's one out of the other that you like the most when you're reading for this character. Uh, I think the one-liners are always my zinger because I, I come from a, a comedic acting background. So it's like, yeah. if I could get a joke in there or something like that, thank you, please. I just want to hit that joke, hit out the park with a home run. He's pretty quick, though, with the knowledge of all the shows and movies. I'm just saying. That is also me. The crazy thing is I used to be in your position. I was a journalist when I first moved to L.A. And I did interviews. And so studying pop culture was a thing of what I still do today. No, oh, it's the best thing to be able to kind of incorporate a lot of that in a role, for sure. Fortune, I will say this, it's so interesting. And you know, we spoke, I think it was last year, but just for laughs, so it's good to see you again. Thanks, um, you too. There's a lot of comedies that have action. There's a lot of action that have comedy in it. Mm -hmm. This is a very amazing, perfect kind of blend of an action comedy. Like you get a little bit of both. Do you notice that when you're reading that in the script? Because I feel like you can make an argument that's 50-50, that's half action, half comedy specifically. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it, it definitely was written to have a comedic uh, element in a lot of the scenes, even if there's something really intense going on or if there's a big action sequence, somebody at some point gives a joke, lightens it up. Um, and so the comedy was already there. Uh, the nice thing was once we were on set, just trying to find the moments with every character. Because as we went, we all sort of discovered who our character was. And I think once you know who your character is, then that allows you to find what's funny about them. That's totally, that, that's so well said, absolutely. And Travis, it's interesting. There, there's a lot of them in the show. My favorite are the briefing scenes when everyone's together. Those are some of my favorite scenes. Are, was there a kind of an overall similar kind of vibe and energy for all of those scenes? Or did it depend kind of on the scene in terms of kind of, like, I'm just curious about that. You know, I mean, I feel like our, a lot of our dynamics came out. Uh, all the character relationships really came out in, the, in those scenes. But those were long days and those were tough to film yeah. and we didn't know if that was working because we were, we were in that room for 12 <laughs> hours usually and so a lot of us, by the time we were finished, we were like, did this even work? Yeah. I, got uh, sick. I got sick one day and uh, couldn't film for a couple hours, not COVID or anything, but uh, uh, you, guys, uh, you guys had to film without me. I had oh. to do my lines. He had to do your, the lines in that, in that office, in that, standing. that scene and then I came in they were all like this, and I'm like, come on, guys, let's get some, some comedy going. Is there, a, a, is there some improv here and there? Like, obviously, it's scripted, and it's amazing. Like, it's a great script and everything, but are there opportunities for little improv like here and there, Milan? Like, oh, absolutely. So so yeah. what Nick Santora told us, he said, hey, I, I would love for you to do it one or two takes my way, and then after that, get to have fun and play with it. As long as we get my take, yeah. do whatever you want. And the reward was to see the improv takes you did make the final cut. It's also a living, breathing thing, though, you know? So it's like on the yep. day, 
something on the page wasn't working. And so you, we would work with the producers and even write something new for that moment. And so it's always something that's really active. And I, I think that was yeah. the part that I liked most about it was we were, it was never a finished product. There's always something to discover. We even had to problem solve that one oh, time. Yeah. There was a continuity thing and we kind of had to figure out how to make it all work because we had already shot like four hours of Yep, of and stuff. I got to watch Fortune <laughs> literally pitch the solution to that, and then we went and filmed it, and it actually worked out really yeah. well. Uh, so I can't wait to pe for, for people to see Fubar uh, worldwide on Netflix, May 25th. Travis Milan, Fortune, so good chatting with you all. Thank you so much for your time. Man, you awesome. Too. Nice to see you. Thank you for tuning in to Popternative. Make sure to check out our past episodes of Popternative on YouTube. Be sure to like Popternative on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. This has been an Autograph Communications production.